subwoofer is just a big black base box and let's be real, they mostly all look alike because there's not much you can do with a ported enclosure meant to hold a big woofer. Or is there? The Arendelle Sound 1723 1V subwoofer is trying to combine a sleek look with house shaking performance so the question is, do they? Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And after using and testing the Arendelle Sound 1723 1V subwoofer in my system for a while, I wanted to share my thoughts and experience with you all. Now before that, of course, you'll need some context about the specs and where it fits in to Arendelle's overall sub lineup. So their new lineup includes two ported and two sealed subs, and both of those include versions which have a single and a version which have dual drivers. Now the 1723 1S sealed and the 1723 1V ported sub are the single driver version and the dual sub versions are the 1723 2S and the 1723 2V. So I've been using the 1723 1V which is the ported version and has a single 13.8 inch driver and a slotted 1 inch by 14 inch port and an 800 watt RMS avalanche amplifier. It has a frequency response of 17 hertz to 200 hertz plus or minus 3 dB in ported mode and 18 to 200 hertz plus or minus 3 dB in sealed mode. The cabinet is pretty sizable too coming in at 25 inches high, 18 inches wide and about 22 inches deep. On the back it has the digital controls with multiple built-in parametric EQs for both the sealed and vented modes. The back also has the various connection options like RCA in and outs as well as XLR in and outs. There's also an app which will be launching to control the settings of the sub from your phone which is pretty cool but it wasn't available yet the last time I checked. It also comes in the four finishes that you can find the Arendelle Sound speakers in which are a white or black gloss or a white or black satin like the one I have here. It's a big box of course, but in the front of the room it looks pretty unassuming and the beveled edges on the vertical faces gives the design a pretty sleek look. It's not until you turn it on that you realize how much of a beast this thing is. And let me just say that this sub has an incredible amount of output. After running through the calibration in the receiver, the sub was set to a level of plus 5 dB and a trim of negative 4 dB in the receiver. And and the sub had some of the most room filling bass that I have heard in my room. In ported mode, it had such smooth yet visceral bass that was enveloping and actually wasn't easily localized. The sub created so much output in fact that in certain scenes, I heard rattles in my room that I have never heard before. I think it may be the curtain rods, but I'm still not sure. Suffice it to say that I don't think the sub would have any problem at all filling out the bottom end of the frequency range in pretty much any type of setup. Whether you have large speakers that you can run at full range or smaller speakers that you have to manage with a suitable crossover. I tested how it performs in those scenarios with the SVS Ultra Towers that you see behind me. The speakers have a pretty good bass response when playing by themselves as you may have seen in the movie demo, but it's nothing compared to the sheer output and that chest slamming tactile bass response you get when the sub is turned on. Which is what you want in your home theater. It gives a lot of dimension to low frequency effects for explosions and to build suspense like with infrasonic bass effects under 20 hertz that you don't actually hear but you feel and rattles everything in your room that's not battened down. When you plug the port and enable sealed mode, it doesn't quite have the same amount of output as it does in the vented mode, which is to be expected, but it did allow for a bit more room gain in the sub 20 hertz frequency range, at least in my room. 
It also made the bass response tighter with a bit more transients than ported mode, which is what you'd want when listening to music, for example. But even with that being the case, I prefer the response and output of the vented mode, and that's how I primarily use the 1V. I measured the frequency response of the sub in both sealed and ported mode with the Umic One measurement mic and Room EQ Wizard, and in vented mode, there was a response roll off after 20 hertz, as to be expected. Sealed with room gain, it still maintained a great response over the subsonic range below that. Now, to be clear, this isn't a standard measurement like how manufacturers determine the flat frequency response of their speakers or subs, which is done at one or two meters away from the speaker. No, this measurement was done using my main listening position, so it's effectively measuring how the speaker performs in my room in particular. The same measurements in your room would definitely look different because it depends on the acoustics of your room, but this is the best way I could add a bit of quantification to the test. So to make that frequency response curve flatter in your room, that is to remove the peaks and valleys that you see in the measurement, is the reason you need something like a parametric EQ, and it just so happens that this sub has a very detailed one built in, so that wouldn't be a problem. So not only does this sub have the brawn to absolutely shake your room, but it has the brains to shake it by just the right amount. And I tried pushing it to the limits by playing it at max levels, but I was totally convinced that my room would fall apart long before the sub was able to actually reach its limit. So that exercise didn't last very long. So essentially what I'm saying is that this sub is absolutely incredible and it comes with the tools to make sure it performs in your room how you want it to. So who is the sub for? Well, if you have a medium to large sized room and want a sub with incredible output and a lot of customization options, then this is a great option. Or let me put it this way, if I was in the market for a new sub right now and had to choose between the 1723 1V and my SVS SB4000 for home theater at the same price, I'd go with the 1V. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and which sub you have in your system. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more content on home theater and displays, of course. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying be safe and peace.